So it's Cataract Awareness Month, and it's very important to get into that conversation and with us to lead us and to give us advice and to really uh, break this down for us so we could understand. We welcome from the Trinidad Eye Hospital, Dr. Ronnie Bola. Dr. Bola, great to have you with us, and thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Jason. It's a pleasure. Indeed, and it's an important conversation, and I want to find out when we consider cataract and the Caribbean, uh, how prevalent is it here, Trinidad and Tobago, by extension, the Caribbean, when compared to other parts of the world? So, the, one of the problems we have with deciding the burden of cataract in, in the region is we don't have good up-to-date data on the, the islands, but also Trinidad, on the, the burden of uh, cataracts for the country. And, and that's one of the things we want to highlight when we have uh, the, 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 the chance, which is like this, where we have a month dedicated to looking at the problem of cataract. And one of the things we want to do is to calculate uh, more accurately the burden of the problem that we have. And one of the ways you, we do that is by measuring a, a, a rate, something called the cataract surgical rate which is the amount of cataracts that you have that you need to do to be able to call yourself a developed country or a, even a developing country. Now, the last time we looked at the, um, the prevalence of cataract or the, the burden of blindness from cataract was around 2014, and, and the rate there was about a third of all blindness is caused by, by cataract. And it's Worldwide, it's, the rates are very similar. So we're kind of similar to the worldwide rates. We do think that the region has suffered a bit, well, quite a lot actually from the COVID because there was a period of time where we couldn't do any cataract surgery um, and that made backlogs uh, double and triple. So we think it's actually more than the old rate that we, we were thinking about. And in that regard, do we know the percentage at all? I know you said that data, um, you know, in terms of the region is not readily available, but when we zone in on Trinidad, uh, what's the percentage of people here uh, with cataract in, uh, on the island? So, so we think that blindness due to cataract, is, and we, it was calculated in 2014 at about 30%. So kind of one third of blindness is caused by cataract. And, and that's a reversible blinding condition, unlike some other blinding conditions. So it's one of the things that we would we would recommend that we focus on when we're trying to resolve blindness from cataracts. What's the treatment uh, recommended for cataracts? Let's say somebody's able to catch it early. They come to the Trinidad Eye Hospital. Uh, what will you recommend? What, what's the process from, from, from that diagnosis, from the time you recognize uh, that they present with this issue? Walk me through it. Yeah, the, the first thing you have to do is to assess whether the cataract is causing uh, visual impairment that is affecting the daily functioning of the person. So not everybody who has a cataract will require an intervention like, like surgery. And there is only one intervention for cataract that is, is really effective, and that's surgery. So what we do is we do an assessment of the cataract, and we look and see what is the benefit that this procedure will have on your life. So some people, like let's say you're an a, 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 a airline pilot, you really need almost perfect 2020 vision to be able to, to, to do your job. So once you get a little bit of cataract, we're going to have to consider intervening in that stage. But somebody who might be a housewife and they're at home, they, they don't need a perfect 2020 vision to do a lot of their tasks. And they, will tell you, I, I don't want to have any surgery. I could still, you know, see really well. And when we look at the eye, we see in quite a significant cataract. So it really depends on the life uh, style of the individual and the amount of cataract. And we make that assessment for the patient and then, um, and then proceed from there. And in that regard, when someone presents with cataract, what are some of the... Uh, I would say causes, the root cause, what are, I would imagine it's probably a many different avenues, but what are some of the symptoms? Is it lifestyle? Is it based on diet? Is it based on an environment? What brings someone to this place where they present with cataract? 
So o- almost 90% or, or more cataracts that we see is due to aging. So usually the patients are in their 70s, their 80s, and they're now starting to realize, oh, I have a little bit of reduced vision. It's pretty gradual reduction in vision. And then they present to the eye care professionals and, and we diagnose it. It's actually one of the diagnoses that it's not hard to diagnose because we could see it with the machines we have. So it's, it's, it's a straightforward diagnosis. The, the thing is, if you notice reducing vision, other things could be going on in the eyes. Like if you're diabetic, it could be bleeding. If you're short-sighted, it could be retinal detachment, or all sorts of things. So if you get a reduced vision, you need to see your, your eye care professional to get diagnosed. Now, if you younger, so in the younger age groups, you know, you have things that could lead to cataract formation. Um, so let's say somebody is in their 30s or their 40s, and it does occur earlier in some people, we usually find it related to something else. So it's either a young diabetic, they've been diabetic um, in their teenage years, and now they're getting cataracts in their 30s and 40s, or they, they had trauma, you know, significant, uh, they were in a car accident uh, two, three years ago, and now because of the trauma they developed in a cataract, some eyes are prone to it because they have inflammation or other problems in the eye that lead to cataract formation. Sometimes uh, people are on medication, such as steroids, and that can induce cataract. So there are multiple causes for cataract in some individuals, but by and large, majority is age-related. What about those who do welding and don't use proper safety equipment, and sometimes you hear of this thing called arc eye. That's something I grew up hearing about. Uh, is, is, is that also similar to cataract, or that's a separate scenario? So the cataract is, is a clouding of your natural lens inside the eye. And, and what it does is it blocks the light from getting to the back of the eye. And the surgery is to replace that lens with a nice 100% transparent lens, and then you get really fantastic vision. And when we replace the cataract, we, we, we can put a lens that then focuses all the light to the back of the eye and really gives you that 20-20 vision. Now, archive and um, w- welders, um, uh, issues, they really get two problems, as you identify is the archive, which is a keratitis one, inflammation of the cornea caused by the, by the, the, the photo uh, um, rays of the, of the arc, and it causes inflammation in the clear window in front for the cornea, and they get a lot of, of pain, weeping of the eyes, and photophobia, and it really is it's painful, but it, it is self-limiting, it would resolve. What we usually do is use antibiotics to prevent infection, and the other thing these welders get is they, some don't weld with their safety glasses, you know, they, they take a chance, and then they get these sparks, um, which is little uh, fragments of the metal stuck to the cornea, and then we have to physically remove that. All in all, these are minor um, uh, things that heal really well, but they do need to come in and see the ophthalmologist to make sure they don't develop any you know, complications from it. Yeah, you know, it's such an important conversation, and I, I will give you the opportunity as we wrap things up to, to put the number and to put the website out for the uh, Trinidad Eye Hospital so folks could really continue the conversation because the reality is if this is not, you know, if we don't reverse this particular reality and if many uh, folks uh, develop cataract, it could even impact the economy. I mean, that's a deeper conversation right there. So what I'll do is give you the chance to give us a closing remark and put the information out so folks can continue this discourse and they can call to get more details via the Trinidad Eye Hospital. Go right ahead. Thank you, Jason. You know, if, if you have uh, issues with your vision, you, you can easily contact us. Um, and at, at, you know, you just Google us on the Trinidad Eye Hospital website and you, you come and we, we could have a look at the eyes and then we, we could act accordingly. But cataract, as, as Jason was saying, is really, a lot of people can't afford the surgery, and, and that is the, the stumbling block um, to, to really alleviate blindness in any, in, in Trinidad especially, from, um, from this blinding problem. And one of the things we, we want to, um, to, to get to, to see during this month is that to, a solution for that is not um, beyond us in this country. We need to get the public, which is the government, the ministries, in collaboration with the, uh, the, the healthcare providers, which is the ophthalmologists, 
and, and other healthcare providers together working on a solution for this problem. And I think a solution is eminent once we put our heads together and we, we discuss and we come up with innovative ways to solve this problem. In the UK, uh, uh, one of the solutions that they came up with, which is the National Health Service, they're similar to our health service here, is that they involve the, the, the private uh, ophthalmologist with the uh, public service. And what they did was they came up with a way to, to have public-private partnerships to solve their backlogs from COVID in cataract surgery. And I think Trinidad is well-placed to have those conversations. Yeah. Well, Dr. Bola, let me tell you. It's, it's been a pleasure. Uh, let's keep the discourse going, and uh, I look forward to chatting with you soon. Again, feel free, Trinidad and Tobago, to contact Dr. Bola and his colleagues there at the Trinidad Eye Hospital. Uh, the number is on the back of the uh, screen there. It's 2354834. What, my eyes are all good, boy. I mean, come yeah, from here. You don't, you, don't, you don't have a camera. You're Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> all the best, Doc. Have a great one. Have Thank a great you. one. Thank wow. You. My eyes make all that. Yes, look at that. Uh, let's head across after the break to a serious conversation for those interested in law. Uh, yes, 2023 open days. We touch base with lecturer Dr. Justin Koo from the Faculty of Law at the University of the West Indies. Let's hear what's happening.